Night Journeys, Part 3, The Promise Chapter 1 Despite my desire to turn away, I kept looking at her hand, the one that bore the brand. Even in her sleep, she had it curled into a fist, no doubt from force of habit. More than once, I was tempted to lean forward and pry her fingers open to look at it again, but I was afraid to do it. So we sat, not moving, she asleep and I trying to decide how best to act. As I thought about who she was and what she had been, I began to put aside our crossing of the river, put it aside as of no account. Instead, I saw her only as the runaway we had sought, the felon we had looked for. I, I alone, had caught her. The longer I sat there, the more that sense of triumph grew, unfurling gaudy images within my mind of my return home. I saw myself bringing the girl to Mr. Shin's house, claiming the reward for her capture, a great victory that would wipe away my other failings. The more I thought of it, the more it pleased me, and the more I knew what I wanted to do. So it was that I decided to pretend to have noticed nothing and find a way to get her to return home with me. In time, she opened her eyes. I felt compelled to make idle chatter, lest she suspect what I had decided. We didn't go up the river enough, I said. It was my fault what happened. Are we in Pennsylvania? She asked. We're on the island, I explained. There's only the channel to go. We won't have any trouble with that. I thought we weren't going to reach it at all, she said. Aye, but I set you to it, I replied. I suppose I had to get you out. She leaned her head against the tree again, lapsing into silence. My home's not far away, I blurted out. You could come back with me. There's someone there, Mistress Shin. She'll mend your clothing. She opened her eyes and looked intently at me. Uncomfortable under her gaze, I turned away, beginning to worry that she might guess what I was about. You would not believe all the foolish things I've done today, I said, feeling the need to say something. She didn't respond. You see, I continued, almost afraid to stop. Mr. Shin and I went hunting last night. That's how I came to sprain my arm. I tripped on something and fell. Then, when we had to go... I remembered I'd left my gun on this island. What were you hunting? She asked. Rabbits, I said, coming to my feet. But he lost patience with me and left. I had to come back alone. That was on the boat. That's when I was carried to the Jersey Shore. I told you about that. She started to get up. We don't have to go yet, I urged, all but pushing her back down. You can rest for a while more. I'll fetch the gun and come back. It won't take long. Then we'll go. Her eyes still on me, I paused before I went, uncertain. Then, remembering my decision, I left quickly, keeping to the island shore. I went hastily, though easily enough, considering that I was without any boots. I found the spot where Mr. Shannon and I had kept watch the night before. From there, I could find the place where I'd put the gun. It was just where I'd left it. Even Mr. Shin's handkerchief was there. Stuffing the linen cloth into my pocket, I reloaded the gun, priming it carefully, though my fingers trembled. I wanted to be sure I had it ready to use. Gun in hand, my heart beating with nervousness, I returned the way I'd come along the shore. But when I reached the spot where I'd left her, she was gone. And we'll go on with chapter two in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, please reach down, click like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. I love you, as Tigger says. Ta-ta for now.